we will include the library that we have created, which is fusi.h. Then here we place the header of the library. Remember that in said header, which is this fusi, edge we have here above, we will have everything that is the prototype or the function signatures here. We have then the code done here for fuzzy logic in Arduino. Remember that we also have the paper where this code was executed, something very important. And it is a problem that arises, for example, in my version of Arduino. I don't know if it happens in yours, and it is that the maximum and minimum functions. Well, they are built-in functions that Arduino already possesses. However, evidently these functions have received or have multiple bugs, depending on the version of the integrated development environment you have. To join us in health, what I did in these lines was to redefine the max and min functions within the Arduino microcontroller. So, in the beginning, I utilized this compiler directive that instructs it to cease defining the maximum function, a defined maximum, and here I redefine it. So I state, well, I desire it to define the maximum between A and B. And here I implement this if else, which is the conditional that already computes the maximum between A and B in order to obtain the desired outcome. And we do the same with the minimum minimum between A and B, then it will return who will be the smallest between A and B with this. We also go here to place this directive simply if the Fusi library has not been defined, then we are going to define this object so that several appointments of the same library are not created. This is a practice that is done in CE and here also in C++ which is the one used by the Arduino IDE because it is very similar. And let's see that here we are creating the function signature. In this case, we have the signature of the triangular function with its input parameters. And we have the signature of my fuzzy with its input parameters. They know that then all that is here at point H and that this point H is going to call now the file that is the fuzzy cpp fuzzy.c++. That is where said functions are already implemented. Then here in the implementation file, we must call again, what is the header of the fuzzy got H. And here we already have the implementation of who is the triangular function. And we also have the implementation of who is the myfusi function. If you want to learn how to program this control algorithm, I've got something special for you. I've created a Udemy course focused on teaching you how to program and apply different control algorithms directly on Arduino. This course is designed to take you from the basis all the way to advanced applications using practical examples in real-world scenarios. Simple, click on this card or the link in the video description to enroll in the course at special discount. This discount is only available through these links, so you won't find it if you search directly on Udemy. You'll have lifetime access to the course and can progress at your own pace. You can ask me any question about covered topics and I will always be here to answer them. At the end of the course, you will earn a certificate of completion. So, I hope to see you in the course. We proceed to connect the Arduino board to our computer. We are going to program it and we are going to open the test lab interface in order to monitor the temperature. Here we'll set a set point of 45 and observe how the temperature variable rises. We see it's a conservative control. This can be modified by tuning the controller, modifying the membership functions, using another type, e.g. trapezoidal, or increasing the universe of discourse. But we see that it is a control that behaves very well. It has already reached the set point, so let's establish another new set point to see if it can reach it and see how the manipulated variable also increases in this case. In the set point of 75, we observe how both variables, the controlled and the manipulated, are moving and gradually the temperature is reaching the set point. Remember that you can try other membership functions, other discourse universes, to improve the temporal response of this controller implemented all in our Arduino. Finally, we have reached the set point of 75. Let's analyze the disturbance rejection that this controller has. We'll proceed to ventilate the TempLab transistors. Here I'm ventilating and I've generated this disturbance here and we see the controller acted. We see the manipulated variable that increased the temperature and we see that the manipulated variable quickly reaches the reference. Let's save this response so that they have it for download. If you are interested in seeing the code and learning more about implementing controllers in real life using microcontrollers like Arduino, I invite you to enroll in the course. Click here to access the discount. Also, check out our playlist for more insights. I look forward to seeing you in the course. Take care and see you later.